Hey guys, welcome to the second part of my video series on building a chat application using Flask and Socket.io. So in the last video, we built a very basic chat application where we were able to create the concept of chat rooms and multiple users were able to join the chat room and then able to chat with each other. We were using Socket.io for real time communication. So that is what we have been able to achieve in the first part of this video series. And now we are going to solve some other problems. So the first problem that we can see right here is that we are not having any persistent storage. So if I reload this page, all the messages are gone, right? So we are not saving the message chat messages anywhere. And that is where we will need a database where we will be saving them. So that is one thing. Another thing is that we are not having any authentication system here right because we are allowing anyone to enter any username and a room id and then they can um, just use any username to talk with any other person right so that is not uh, what should happen in the real world because any user should provide the username and the password get authenticated and then use that username for talking with another person so for all these things, the first and foremost thing that we need is a database where we can store the chat message data or the user data and so on. So what we're going to do in this video is that we're going to set up a database for ourselves, which we'll be utilizing for storing user as well as chat data. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so in this tutorial series, I'm going to be using MongoDB as our database. So MongoDB is actually a kind of a NoSQL database. So if you do not know about NoSQL databases, then uh, here it is. You have the concept of SQL databases where you store data in relational database. A relational database is the one where you have the concept of tables, where the table has rows in which you have columns. So that is where you store the data and then you can define some relations between those tables. But then comes the concept of NoSQL databases where you have non-relational database. You have a concept of collections and inside the collections you store multiple documents. So the document that you store actually contains data normally in JSON format. So now the best thing about JSON format is that it is quite flexible in a way that you can change it very easily, right? So that is the first advantage that we get by using NoSQL databases that we have data stored in a quite fluid and flexible manner because it is JSON format. And also you define the schema of your database in JSON format as well. So that can also be changed easily. Other than that, NoSQL databases provide high availability and scalability. So these are some reasons why would you like to use a NoSQL database for a real time application. For example, our chat application, right? So MongoDB is a kind of a NoSQL database and the MongoDB organization itself provides a service called MongoDB Atlas. It is a kind of a platform where you can host a MongoDB database. So it is actually a database as a service. So you can simply um, create a MongoDB cluster here for free and then you can create multiple databases and then collections inside those databases and so on. So yeah, so we get a free kind, we get a kind of a free trial in MongoDB Atlas. So that's why it is quite cool for us to use it for the tutorial purpose only, right? But if you want to make a, uh, you can say a commercial chat application, then you might need to check out other options or you might need to get a plan from MongoDB. So yeah, so that's all about it. And also I have already created a video on working with MongoDB Atlas using Python. So if you want a deeper understanding of how to use MongoDB Atlas, then you can check out this video of mine. So yeah, so that is uh, a thing. And now what you need to do to get started is that first of all, you have, will have to sign in to get a account with a free cluster. And so first of all, just create an account and then we will get started with making a cluster. Okay, so once you have created an account on MongoDB Atlas, this is what your dashboard will look like once you log in. So a cluster is what I'm going to create first of all. It is, you can think of it like you are spinning up your database server in a way. So I'm just going to select a free cluster. And there I have multiple cloud provider options. So I am going with AWS only and regions. I am going to select Mumbai. It's a free tier and it is closer to me. And everything else is default, which is free. Let me put a cluster name as let's say 
chat app okay so let me call my cluster as chat app so create cluster so now my cluster will get created okay so while my cluster is getting created let us do a few other things so in the security section we have database access and network access so in order to access my database i need to create a database user so that is what i'm going to create here so add new user and username let me call it test and let me put the password as test as well so i'm going to give it read and write access to my database any database that i will create in uh, a particular cluster so add user so that is done another thing that i need is network access so my mongodb database actually lives on a particular machine on the cloud right and when i write some code i have to connect to that mongodb database first so in order to connect to that database i will be sending a request from my machine to the cloud right so i can put some restrictions on what ip addresses can make a request to my database so here in the ip whitelist i am gonna add a whitelist where i am gonna specify that any ip should be allowed because right now i am just testing so it doesn't matter but once you have created um, your application you have deployed it somewhere and you know the ip address then you should put it in the whitelist entry so yeah so i'm just gonna confirm it and okay so the status is pending in a few moments it will be fixed so that is all now let us see uh, if our cluster is ready or not so our cluster is getting ready for now um, and while our cluster is getting ready let us do a few other things as well um, so for connecting to the cluster i will need a python library so for connecting with my mongodb database i need a python library called pymongo so for that you just need to do pip install pymongo so pymongo is getting installed in my virtual environment so once that is done we are ready to use pymongo okay so my cluster is still getting created it seems okay it is almost there i think i can select collections now so let me go to collections yeah so i think i can create a collection now okay so let me start by add my own data so first of all i do not have any database in my cluster so i'm just going to create a database first of all so let me call it chat db and the collection name so think of a collection name as a table name you are creating a kind of a table for storing some related data so let me start by creating a collection for users let's say so let me just call it users so this is my first collection so in this collection all the documents will be having the data about users okay so this is how it looks like right now chat db right so in which i have users there are zero users here so now let us start by uh, writing some code to connect to our mongodb database so for that i will need um i will need some help about how to connect so here is an option to connect and here i will get the link which i can use to connect to my mongodb database okay so let's start so the first thing is i'm just gonna create a file called db.py in my project okay so db.py will always contain all the logic for connecting to the database or retrieving and pushing and data to the database so from pymongo we are gonna import mongo client and then we are gonna create a mongo client pymongo client so it is gonna be like mongo client in which i have to pass that same url which i just copied so this is my url and here if you notice we have password which is not provided here so i had created a user i have created an uh, a user with the username test and the password test so i'm just gonna put that here so yeah so here we are getting an option to add requirement pi mongo to requirements to txt that's fine okay so we have created a client and now let me just run db.py to see if my client is getting created successfully or not python3 db.py so if this runs successfully 
it means that our client is getting created yeah so this looks fine and let's move on uh, to the next thing what do we need to do we need to find our database right so let's call it chat db is equal to client dot get database chat db so this was the name of my database right this was the name that i had given to chat db uh, let me go to collections so yeah so chat okay c is capital so you just need to know the name right so chat db is the name of my database in which i have a collection which is called users so let us let us call it users collection is equal to um chat db dot get collection in which i have to pass the name of the collection which is users that's it so this seems fine so let us see if we are able to get this much amount of connection or not so let me just run db.py again and yeah we are not getting any errors which means that we are able to get the users collection easily so now i'm going to do a few things let us define a function to save a particular user so in my chat application i'll be saving some information about a user which will be username email and password so whenever i want to create a new user entry i'll be saving it like username email and the password and how do we save it actually for that you have to do users collection dot insert one so insert one is the function where you pass some data you can pass a dictionary so now the thing is that in my users collection i want to use username as the primary key which means that username should be unique in my chat application so how do i do that in mongodb in mongodb what you have to do is that you create uh, you define the underscore id field as the unique key so for that i am putting the value as username so what will happen is that if i create another user with the same underscore id value then i will get a duplicate key error right so i'm going to just use username as my primary key by defining it by defining its key as underscore id which is by default the primary key of any mongodb collection so yeah so this is the thing and other than that email i'm just going to save it simply like this and the password okay so the password i am not going to save my password as a simple text the plain text password basically i would like to save it as hash password hashed password why because if anyone gets um, any access to my database then they can get the password of all the users which is not a very good idea right because then that can be used to hack somewhere else as well so this is not a good practice to store the passwords as plain text and generally we hash the password so by hash we mean that we put some function which turns it into something cryptic so for that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use the workzog library so from workzog dot security import uh, generate password hash so that is what we are going to use so workzog is actually a web application uh, utility library it provides some some utilities for your web application and in the security module it provides you generate password hash function which uses the best practices for generating a hash for a password used in, used in a normal web application so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a password hash like this generate password hash in which i will pass the plain text password and once that is done i'm going to save the password as password hash that's it so this is how i am going to be saving my user so yeah so this is all and now in order to test if everything is working fine or not i'm just going to create i'm just going to uh, make a function call to save user so save user let me pass the username as nikhil and the email as something dumb and the password let's call it test so let us see what kind of password we will see in the actual collection okay so this is my script so let me run python 3 db.py again okay so everything ran successfully so let us see if we have it in our collection or not so let me just refresh and look at that we have one 
document in our collection users and here you can see that underscore id is nikhil and the email is something and the password you can see is not test it is some hash value right it is the hash of my password so yeah so in this way we have created the first entry in our users table and now this username will have this password which will be authenticated before letting them enter in our application and chatting with anyone else so yeah uh, so i think this is where i should end this video and this is all that we had to do for setting up our database in a way and in the next video we will be um, implementing the login functionality in our chat application and yeah so that is what we are going to do in the next video if you still have any doubts from this video then you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching